From KETK, you're watching East Texas Live. Welcome back. February is Heart Month and it's time to bring awareness to heart health. But today is Valve Replacement Day and Dr. Smith and Dixie are here to tell us why this day is so important. How are we doing today? Great. Good. How are you? I'm doing great too. And awesome. so Dr. Smith, can you tell me what valve replacement is? So there's four heart valves in the heart and they, they open to let the blood go forward through the heart and they close to keep the blood from leaking backward. Um, the two main valves will be the valves on the left side of the heart, the aortic valve and the mitral valve. And if they get narrowed where the valve doesn't open well or if they get leaky where the valve doesn't close well, people get, get sick from that and need to have new valves put in. And so who would ben benefit from this? So. The general population, if they, if they have a valve that's too narrowed or too leaky, uh, they get symptoms that, like short of breath, things like that. And if, we, if the doctor finds that out, we do a, an ultrasound, an echocardiogram, where we can see if the valve is not working well. And if there's really a severe problem, that person that's having symptoms from it, if they get a new valve put in, would feel better after the valve's replaced. And Dixie, so what kind of symptoms do people see when they might need a valve replaced? Um, well, the most common symptoms, the, the three most common symptoms are chest pain or pressure, um, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, and then just feeling dizzy or lightheaded like you might want to faint or pass out. But not everyone presents with the most common textbook symptoms of chest pain. Um, sometimes people can have some palpitations like their heart's racing or fluttering. Uh, sometimes people can get swollen in their legs. Um, but the most common thing that I've seen people kind of ignore that we kind of wanted to bring attention to today is just fatigue or kind of a decrease in your activity tolerance, you know, not being able to do what you used to do. Sometimes people think that's just kind of part of growing up or getting older, but it can be a serious symptom of a heart issue. So we're just wanting to encourage people if you have any of those symptoms, if it's the textbook chest pain or if it's the, you know, feeling tired or not able to do what you used to do, please tell your health care provider. And if you don't have a cardiologist, of course, we would love to help take care of them, um, help listen to their concerns, and, and help guide them through their health care journey. Yes, ma'am. And Dr. Smith, he kind of walked through us through a little bit of uh, yeah. how that procedure goes. So historically, for the longest time, open heart uh, surgery was needed, where the surgeon would open the chest, cut the bad valve out, and sew a new valve in. And, and that's still done. The heart surgeons still do that on a regular basis, daily and weekly. Um, a newer technology that's been out for the last 10 years or so is transcatheter aortic valve replacement, TAVR, T-A-V-R, where we can actually go in through the groin uh, with a, a, a couple of tubes, but a large catheter, which is a hollow tube that goes up. It has a new valve inside of it. As you can see, this is a, a sample of it. A new valve goes up. We run a, through the arteries, we run a wire up across the old valve in the heart. We take that catheter that has a new valve inside of it and we go up. We go inside the valve that's already in there and then we deploy or we release the new valve, the TAVR valve. That new valve goes in, it crushes the old valve to the side, but the new valve stays in place and it's all done through the groin. The other valve, the mitral valve, is also being able, to, or we're able to, to fix that through the groin sometimes as well. Um, usually people are in the hospital for about one night, maybe two nights. They usually go home the next day, take it easy for about two weeks to let the groin sites heal up, and then after that start increasing their exercise level. And where does these new valves come from? So the new valves are made by different, different uh, companies uh, like Medtronic and Edwards. They're big, big cardiology or medical companies that are made, uh, made out of either like uh, cow tissue, cow heart tissue or uh, pig heart tissue. That's crazy. I, yeah, know, cool. I was wondering where they come from, but yeah. uh, what's the recovery process like? So typically for, for open heart surgery, when the valve's cut out and put in, you're talking about having to have the sternum you know, heal. It could take a few months uh, to, to heal up where someone feels like they're back to their usual self. Going through the groin, the TAVR procedure is much less invasive, like I mentioned. We do go in uh, on both sides, and so we recommend about two weeks to let the patient recover, just so we don't get any bleeding or problems at the groin site where we put the valve in, where we go in. Uh, and then after about two weeks, really people can start kind of increasing their activity level. We want to do cardiac rehab where they go a few days a week to some monitored uh, exercise and we start doing that after about two to four weeks. Wow. And uh, where can they get more information about this? Um, well, they can contact us at the office at Christus Cardiology. Um, we're happy to, to address any of their concerns. Um, some of our patients that we already see also have options to reach us through my chart. Um, either way. All right, thank y'all both for coming in. We appreciate us about it. that heart mm -hmm. health.